Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw a manga bad guy. And uh, just to give you a little heads up, I'm testing out new equipment today uh, using a microphone, an actual separate microphone for the first time. Hopefully that'll improve the audio and uh, help me deal with some audio issues that I've been having. And you can see I'm testing out a new technique here with uh, a printing out a, a piece of paper from my computer that has a dot pattern, a sort of grayscale dot pattern on it, and also uh, this little word balloon here, Doko Ikunda which is what the bad guy's going to be saying. Where are you going? Takes on a sort of added menacing feeling. But first of all, let's go ahead and put down some basic guidelines so that we can get onto the real drawing. <laughs> All right, well, we've got enough of the basic guidelines in place. I want to start moving on to some of the details of the face. Let's uh, refocus the camera, get closer in on the eyes. All right, so uh, we're going to start working on the eyes here. I guess the first thing I should do is uh, do the uh, irises. And uh, the key thing here, I'm trying to create this sort of uh, sinister look, uh, and uh, achieving that, for me, means getting the irises... Uh, well underneath the upper eyelids, uh, to the point where the pupils are kind of half covered. And uh, this is going to help us make him, you know, he's going to be smiling while uh, wearing, uh, wearing, <laughs> is he wearing? He's wearing these angry looking eyebrows. Wearing them like clothes, man. Anyway, uh, this this line here is going to be the fold of the upper eyelid. Um, I'm giving him these sort of heavy eyelids, so that means creating a fairly wide space between uh, the uh, the line of the upper eyelash, I guess you'd call this one, and this fold of the uh, upper eyelid. Going to do the same thing over here. And now it's time to start drawing these uh, eyebrows I was talking about. Now, um, one thing I need to just sort of caution with this is, I mean, the very idea of doing a video called How to Draw a Manga Bad Guy is uh, maybe going <laughs> to leave me open to criticism, because of course there's so many different ways of drawing a manga bad guy, and uh, maybe I'll have to be creative with the title of this one. Really, I looked at a number of different manga bad guy type characters and, and came up with uh, at least some principles that I could apply to this one of my own creation that I'm sort of coming up with today. Now, notice how this eyebrow here is sort of curving. Uh, and uh, generally, eyebrows of manga characters are not very thick, certainly not hairy, uh, bushy type air, uh, eyebrows, but for this guy, I think it's going to add to his look of menace if I give him the sort of Jack Nicholson, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, getting thicker and wider t as they reach this upper edge, almost uh, having like they have little horns or something. Eyebrows with horns. You do have a creative way of describing things, don't you, Mr. Critty? Anyway, so we get this, uh, the curve, and uh, the way I'm doing it anyway, these sort of peaks that come up at the edge. Um, getting a little bit of a hook down here um, as it reaches the middle of the, the nose, or the bridge of the nose. And uh, I'm going to add just a couple of lines here that just sort of um, indicate this space between the eyes and the the eyebrows. All of this I'm going to be inking later on, so you can treat all of these as just sort of penciled uh, preliminary lines. Uh, I want to give him the, the sort of bags under his eyes. He's going to add to that sort of sinister look. Uh, and maybe now it's time to move on to uh, adding a little more detail to the nose. So I'm going to put a couple of lines here. Uh, generally the nose in manga characters is not uh, delineated very much. It's not You don't call a lot of attention to it. Sometimes it's a little more than just a dot. But in the case of some of these bad guy characters, very often they will. Um, put a shadow underneath it like this one. Um, you know, you could have two lines here, you could have a second line. I kind of prefer to just have one line 
uh, for the bridge of the nose. Now it's time to move on to the mouth. And uh, as you can see, I've made it sort of lopsided, like he's, he's smiling, but one side of his smile is raised higher than the other, and that creates this effect of a, a sneer. Uh, which, of course, is not limited to uh, manga. You see, you know, sneering villains uh, throughout the history of probably uh, anything, you know, uh, plays, movies, what have you. Uh, but notice these uh, lines that I'm putting, uh, these sort of smile lines that I'm putting around the edge. Now, it's, I think we're all taught as kids maybe to put these smile lines uh, in, onto smiles, but manga characters generally do not draw them. And when you put... Um, uh, these lines onto a character, it, uh, it really calls attention to the wrinkles and makes them look kind of villainous, so I would watch out for that if, if it is not your intention to have a uh, you know, bad guy character. I wouldn't put these lines in for the smile of, of your average you know, manga protagonist. Now I'm going to start building up the uh, cheekbones Give this guy some very uh, sharp, delineated cheekbones. Again, something that is generally not drawn on most. I mean, do you see how angular all of this is? This is these are all, to me, sort of hallmarks of the way a villain might be drawn um, in some manga. Of course, not all manga. This is not the way. This is just a way. <laughs> of doing it. Um, giving him, uh, out outlining the lower lip. Pretty unorthodox for manga characters. Uh, yeah, I, there are some varieties where you indicate the lower lip, but uh, to make when I see these wide, um, thoroughly outlined lips, I, I feel like I'm definitely looking at some sort of bad guy character. Now I am going to do. Let's go ahead and do the hair, and uh, I think in this case I should just do it in time lapse. Sorry, I got to save some time somewhere, so I'm going to go ahead and do the hair in time lapse. All right, so you can see I went ahead and did the ears as well. You know, the I don't think the ears of a bad guy really are drawn any differently uh, from those of a good guy. Let me, I could be wrong. I often am. Let me know uh, if you have um, evidence to the contrary on that one. But uh, what I want to do now is pull back, refocus, so that we can draw the neck uh, and the shoulders. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is do a little bit like I did before. Get some basic guidelines down in a step-by-step -step way uh, so that we can move on to the final lines. All right, so uh, I've got the basic guidelines of the shoulders here, and I'm going to uh, do a few more things here in terms of the face. One is to give him a kind of, this is just a personal preference here, uh, give him a little hipsterish looking goatee. Of course, now I have alienated <laughs> anyone who watches my videos who happens to have a hipsterish goatee. What are you saying, man? You're saying we're all villains, we're all bad guys, just because of our facial hair? Um, I'm, I may well lose some subscribers on this one, and my apologies. Uh, but what I want to do here is uh, add a little shadow underneath the chin. This is not uh, necessarily particular to uh, bad guys only, uh, but uh, something that I see in lots of um, manga is some sort of shadow cast by the jaw against the neck. And this might be a nice place for you to practice your... Uh, cross hatching. We get a bunch of lines going in this direction, and then you might add a sort of second layer of lines down here. Of course, all of this will be much uh, clearer when we get to the uh, inking part, which in itself is kind of unusual, right? I hardly ever do inking in these videos, but I thought today I was going to try to do almost like a mock up actual manga panel. That's why I tried to do these dots and uh, see if I could make something that looks like the real deal when it comes to manga. So these, uh, again, these are um, lines uh, that are uh, related to the musculature of the neck. Uh, not going to get too carried away with all that, but I thought I would talk a little bit about cloth here, uh, although it's not so much the uh, subject of this video, but uh, uh, I uh, feel like uh, I'm always hearing from people who want to uh, one tips on drawing clothing. Um, I find that when I'm drawing wrinkles of clothing, it's composed of lines like this, sort of hooking lines like that. Uh, and those two things together are maybe the main things that I'm using for uh, creating the effect of uh, 
wrinkles in the clothing. Let me show you one thing over here, see if I can just sort of do this on the fly. Um, and that is to create, I'm always doing this as a technique. I'm going to erase a little here. So as to create a, um, what would you call that? Protuberance here on the edge of the, uh, you know, breaking up the contour of his jacket or whatever this is. And once you get that there, what I'll do is I'll make a second line that comes up and does not quite connect to either of those two lines. And that's a little technique that I use for suggesting it's a little bit overdone maybe here, but uh, giving the feeling of there being some kind of wrinkle there. Um, basically, I think we've got everything in place and I can start to move on to the um, inking stage. I feel like he could probably use a little more, a few more strands of hair. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, let me know what you thought of this video, this idea of trying to do something that looks like actual printed manga. This is not the way that I actually do. You know, a lot of my work that's done for my books is done in the computer. And I suppose someday I could do one of these videos that is somehow screen capturing or whatever, and you see the curse, cursor moving around uh, doing things, but I, I don't want to lose the human touch of my horrible, ugly-looking hands uh, drawing the pictures. I, I like the feeling that I'm talking to you guys and connecting with you guys, and uh, you somehow uh, have a sense of me really being here using... You know, not everybody has access to expensive computer programs, art programs, and so forth. So, anyway, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me know what you think about this video. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the uh, inking stage. I'm going to do most of it in time-lapse, but maybe stop periodically to uh, uh, give you some tips. Okay, so um, I did all that in time-lapse, unfortunately. Maybe I can do a separate video uh, that will be more focused on inking, but uh, my main piece of advice for you is when you're inking the hair, make sure that you're doing that with really quick, confident uh, strokes of the pen. If you really slow down, you're going to end up with these sort of wobbly uh, lines that really don't um, have that graceful look that most manga people want the the hair to have. Um, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, also very unusual. I'm using a kind of a brush pen uh, because I feel like this is this uh, illustration looks kind of unfinished to me. It has what I call a coloring book like quality, uh, as if it's waiting to uh, you know be finished with with color. And so I'm brushing in uh, some black. You know maybe this guy's wearing like a leather jacket or something here. And uh, unfortunately, it may mean that I'm sort of uh, obliterating some of my earlier ink lines, but I do it just as an experiment. You know, I'm, the last thing I want to do here on YouTube is be accused of kind of doing the same thing over and over again. That's kind of a fear of mine that I'll fall in, fall into a rut. And uh, people say, you know, Curly, every time I watch one of your videos, I feel like it's the same old thing. So uh, I'm doing my best uh, to to come up with new uh, methods to teach and uh, new styles of art uh, to do here. So um, I am not a big expert on using brush pens like this. I don't know if you can see that as I <laughs> fumble with some of these lines to get them to look the way I want them to. Uh, I know a lot of people swear by them and uh, are able to do amazing things. Me, uh, I'm more used to using an actual brush um, with uh, watercolor, and I'm not uh, so much... I don't know, with, wa with watercolor you can sort of build toward your finished uh, line, whereas with uh, ink, uh, as always, you know, ink is it's there, man. Once you lay it down, it's... Uh, there's no erasing it. You can sort of um, correct things with white paint, uh, almost like whiteout uh, correction fluid type of a deal. But, you know, especially... Well, one of the reasons I thought I would teach you guys how to do this on a printed out sheet of paper rather than um, on a video screen is I thought you might be able to use it for creating 
one-of-a-kind original works of art that you could give to a friend uh, or something like that. And they would know that, you know, apart from the dots and maybe text or whatever that you did by way of the computer, that it really is a one-of-a-kind, um, never to be reproduced by anyone else. In any case, I think we're reaching the end of this. I may do a few little touch-ups um, in time-lapse, um, but otherwise I believe we are at the end of this process, and I can just come back maybe to uh, wind the video down. All right, well, there's my video on how to draw a manga bad guy. Let me know what you thought about it, especially of this whole technique of trying to create an authentic-looking final panel of inked manga art. Uh, but for now, let me go ahead and thank anyone who has supported me by getting my books. You are the lifeblood of my family, for real. We got Brody's Ghost, we got Miki Falls, and we've got my How to Draw Book Mastering Manga. Uh, but maybe that's all the time I have for today. I'll go ahead and lay down the pencil. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.